Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Today, I'm going to answer the question that is probably on like 80% of your minds. Okay, I'm answering the question that I get the most. I reached out to my staff and I said, look through the emails, look through the DMs. Tell me what question am I getting predominantly most of the time. And without a doubt, even in my comments, without a doubt, that question is, well, what the hell do I eat? Because often what you guys are hearing me say and explain is the foods that are making us sick, okay? And I'm talking about them a lot is because nobody's connecting disease with nutrition, okay? And so if I'm going to tell you what the cause is, what's causing the issue in the beginning, and most of the time that is leading back to a food, and I'm using air quotes because most of it isn't even really food. So when I'm talking about diabetes, I'm talking about refined carbohydrates, sugary beverages, etc. When I'm talking about inflammation in the body, I'm also talking about sugar. When I'm talking about, you know, kidney issues and such and such. I may be talking about eating too much animal protein. The list goes on and on. So people hear this over and over when I'm talking about what the cause is and they begin to think, well, what the hell can I eat? Because at the end of the day, you just went through all the foods that I eat. So I'm going to address that question today. What what do I eat? So simp simply put the list that I'm going to share with you is how I eat. So I'm going to share that list with you today to kind of help you understand. And it's really not a list, more of tips, because I eat specific to not only how to be healthy, but I also eat specific to, you know, how my activity level, you know, like how much I work out and what I'm trying to attain, you know, physically, um, you know, working out in the gym and such. Um, I'm also eating based upon previous deficiencies. I'm also eating based upon, you know, what's available to me as well too. And I'm also eating to make sure that I'm fortifying things in my diet and my lifestyle that are going to be preventative for heart disease, cancer, and uh, diabetes and any type of metabolic disease. So making my immune system strong, making my gut healthy and making my brain in tune and with a lot of clarity and also eating foods that are cleansing to the body as well too. So that's my whole focus when I'm eating. And so what I've done is put together eight tips that ultimately will incorporate those principles in these eight tips. Okay. So this is going to be a good video. I need you to share this video with the people because I, I know people are constantly asking or trying to figure out, all right, I know I eat a trash diet. How do I get over to the healthy side? And the one thing I'll say before I get started with the tips is this. You got to understand most of the foods that people are eating. Like when you go into the supermarket today, most of the foods are in box, bag, cans, jars, etc. Okay, they're packaged. Most of those foods have food labels, okay? When you got a food label, it's because you've either altered the food, okay? You've taken something out you put in some, or you put something in. The example when you take something out is when you remove all the fiber and the nutrients from it, which is what processed foods is, okay? Adding something to it is when you're adding preservatives, thickening agents, you know, emulsifiers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So that is why you need a food label. This is why when you go to get green leafy vegetables or you go to get some fruit, it doesn't have a food label on it, okay? It has a PL, PLU sticker, but that's not a food label, okay? So hugely important to understand that most people are eating foods that require food label, which means that it's been adulterated, it's been changed and modified, okay? And much of that modification is to make you more addicted to it, to make you love it, and it's unfortunately in the process is going to make you sicker as well, too. OK, and most of the food, again, is not real food. OK, so that's hugely important as we go along this journey. The other thing that I want to make mention of is that I want to thank everybody who's been coming out on my change, 
my time for change tour it has been amazing like the the response we just left dc so thank you to everybody who came out in the dmv area it was absolutely amazing it was our highest attendance show and it was also you know the one of the greatest energies as well too so i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody who came out supported uh only two shows left in the year so this has been an amazing 2024 atlanta and charlotte uh charlotte on october 26 and atlanta on november 2nd so i'll see you if you're in those areas i'll see you at those last two shows of 2024 so just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart it was amazing so I really enjoyed the weekend and I left with a lot of energy. So let's get into these eight tips that I'm going to share with you that is going to help you transition to a healthier diet and lifestyle. Okay, number one, tip number one, always be hydrating, stay hydrated. All right, so you should have a goal every day of how much water you're going to drink. You should know how much water you're going to drink. And the reason why you need to know how much is because if you're not intentional about how much you are hydrating yourself, the unfortunate thing is you won't hydrate yourself. Most people are severely dehydrated, okay? Most people think that they're hydrated because they're drinking water or whatever it may be, but most beverages aren't hydrating, okay? If you drink coffee, uh, even some teas can be dehydrating as well too, okay? If you drink sugary beverages, definitely dehydrating. Okay, so some people think that they're drinking things because it's liquid and it's hydrating them, but they're dehydrating them. Okay, hugely important. Also, the type of diet that people are consuming. Most people are consuming a diet that dehydrates them. Okay, and so just think that the example I always give people is, is that if you, the difference between a grape and a raisin is just hydration. That's the only difference. Okay. You take a grape, you remove all the hydration, you get a grape. I mean, you get a raisin, all right? Now, when you eat that raisin and it goes into the body, the body has to rehydrate it, okay? All right, so that's taking away hydration from you. Now, I'm not saying raisins are a bad thing, but I'm just saying that's a raisin. Now, think about all the terrible foods that most people are consuming, especially things like a lot of animal protein. These things are very dehydrating to the body, okay? Hugely important. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, it's going to be very dehydrating to the body. So this is why it's so important to not only be intentional about the amount of hydration you're drinking, but also the amount that you're eating as well, too. Check out my other videos. I've talked about how important it is that you get hydration from your food, okay? And there's really great ways to do that, okay? So hydration, hugely important. Me, I'm drinking half of my body weight in ounces every day. So I weigh about 220 pounds, which means that I'm drinking about 110 ounces of water every day, okay, of hydration, all right? Some of that hydration is coming from my food. Some, A lot of that other hydration is coming from, you know, coconut water and water itself or teas, okay? Hugely important. So number one, always be hydrating, all right? You got to be intentional about that. When you're dehydrated, you are in a medical emergency, okay? Your body is 70% 70 to 80% water. So when you're not putting water in, as you're putting water out, you're sweating, you're urinating, you're having bowel movements, etc., then you're going to become dehydrated and none of your organs function the way that they should. None of the cells in your body functions the way that they should whenever you're dehydrated. So number 1, always be de always be hydrated. Number two, raw salad every day. I have to be intentional about saying raw salad because, man, people eat so much cooked food and people are under the impression that everything they eat needs to be cooked, which means that you need to be intentional about eating things that are in their original form, which is raw, okay? And the best way to do that is either a smoothie every day or a salad every day, okay? I switch up and go back and forth. Most days, I'll be honest, it's, it's a salad, okay? But I go back and forth. So the reason why that is so important is because you're going to be getting your green leafy vegetables. That's where you get most of your magnesium. 
That's where you're going to get hydration from, fiber from, and a ton of other key nutrients as well, too. All right. And the great thing about salads or smoothies is that you could pack all of this nutrition in one space. Like my, my salads are going to have nuts, seeds, olives, cucumbers, maybe some tomatoes, avocados, maybe a tahini dressing. That's all in one space. OK, it could be a big salad or it could be a small salad. All right. But again, same thing with a smoothie. All of that nutrition in one space. OK, so you want to make sure you're getting that on a daily basis because 80 percent of people are actually magnesium deficient. And when you become magnesium deficient, your body is going to contract. OK, it's not going to relax. OK, when it doesn't relax, that means that you're not going to sleep well. When it doesn't relax, that means that you're not going to have proper bowel movements. OK, when it doesn't relax, that means that when your heart contracts in the to beat, okay, to pump blood out, it's got, it has to relax after that. Guess what makes it do that? Magnesium, okay, coming from our green leafy vegetables, okay? And you also want to make sure you're switching those up. Read my book, Vegetation Over Medication. I talk in depth about that. That's hugely important because most people are eating the same leafy green every day, okay? So switch it up. Number three, number three tip, keep it real. Or another way of putting that is real recognizes real, okay? You got to eat real food, okay? Going back to my original point before I got started is that most people are not eating real food, okay? If you got a food label and it has more than five ingredients or it has ingredients on there that you have no idea what it is or it sounds like chemistry, then you're probably not eating real food, Okay? You know, there's a lot of ways to put it. If it doesn't come from the ground, put it down. Real, recognize real, keep it real, eat real food. That's the most important tip that I can give you. Eat real food that has not been saturated with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides and comes lo as local as possible, okay? Or as, and most importantly, natural as possible, okay? Because there are so many... Genetically, genetically modified food, lab-grown meats, things that are saturated with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, the list goes on and on and on, okay? So we got to keep it real. The realer you keep it, the great thing is real recognizes real. Your body is real, so it needs real food, okay? Your body literally is made of the food that you have been consuming, okay? So you're either built out of paper mache or cardboard, or you're built out of bricks. If you eat real food, you're built out of bricks. If you eat a whole bunch of food that's from box bag, cans, jars, laden with all type of chemicals and things that don't have a natural origin, then you're made out of paper mache, which means that when a little bit of wind comes through in the form of a parasite, a bacteria, whatever it may be, your body's going to come crashing down very quickly. This is why most people feel fine one day and all of a sudden, boom. Okay? Because they're walking, ticking time bombs. Okay? That's number three. Keep it real. Number four, be intentional about incorporating healthy fats. Okay? Be intentional about incorporating healthy, healthy fats. Okay? The reason why that's so important is because healthy fats are there to put out the fires in the, your body. Okay, healthy fats are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. They put out inflammation. Okay, most people are riddled with inflammation in their body. Okay, and so as a result, you got to be eating things on a constant basis that are putting out these fires. I mean, exercising can create, especially when you're over-exercising, that could create inflammation. Stress can create inflammation. OK, so it's not just about what you eat, it's your lifestyle as well, too. And so when you're incorporating these healthy fats in your diet, they're going to be helping to put out this inflammation in your body. And inflammation, which comes from an irritation, usually what you're eating or your lifestyle, stress, overworking. OK. Irritation creates an inflammation. Inflammation creates you know, irritation in the tissue, which leads to tissue dysfunction and ultimately tissue degeneration. 
okay? That's the process of dis-ease, okay? Eating healthy fats is going to help you with that. Things like avocados that have oleic acid in them, okay? Walnuts and Brazil nuts that have ALA, okay? Uh, algae, okay? People think, well, can I eat fish oils? Well, most of the fish oil is actually rancid. It's not even good anymore. That's why it smells the way it smells, okay? But the fish actually get their omega-3s from eating algae. That's where they get their omega-3s from. So you're getting a, a secondary source of omega-3s when you eat fish. So why not eat the algae, okay? The red, brown, and green algae, okay? One of my favorite seaweeds is sea moss. That's why I'm constantly adding sea moss in my diet. I'll talk about that one in just a second. Hemp seeds or seeds in general are really good, but hemp seeds are 30% fat and they, they're they loaded with ALA, which is omega-3 fatty acid, okay? Olives. So instead of focusing on olive oil, eat olives, okay? I put those in my salad as well too, all right? So hugely important to understand that the olives are loaded with another omega-3 uh, omega is uh, or uh, oleic acid, okay? So you're getting these healthy fats or fatty acids that are going to put out inflammation in the body. All right. Hugely important. Number five. Number five, I would say would be make 20, at least 25% of your diet fruits. Okay. And if it were me, I'll make them tropical fruits because most of the fruit in the stores today don't have seeds in them. They're grown out of season. Like I just went to the store earlier and I'm seeing watermelon inside of the the grocery store and it's about to be winter. I'm like, <laughs> watermelon season ended in August. Okay, so that's why I say, that's why I focus on tropical fruits. Of course, I own a tropical fruit farm, which you guys see me with the I Heart Fruit Box, but you know, tropical fruits I love because when you're eating tropical fruits, you're not just eating fruits for the taste, but these tropical fruits are also very medicinal. One of my favorite tropical fruits, as you guys know, is soursop. Soursop has been shown to have, to have anti-tumor uh, effects on the body, okay? For so, so, so somebody who has issues with cancer, like this is perfect. Not only the fruit, but the leaves on the tree for the fruit as well too, okay? They're loaded with antioxidants. They're loaded with fiber. They're loaded with hydration or structured water. And they're loaded with a ton of other things that are very medicinal for the body as well, too. Okay? Not to mention that fruits are the most easily digestible foods there are. Out of all the food categories, fruits digest the easy, easiest. Which means that if you're having problems with constipation, fruits are the perfect food to just eat those fruits. Okay? Because you're going to get the fiber, you're going to get the hydration, which is going to lead to a bowel movement. OK, so for me, that's why I'm incorporating so many fruits in my diet is to make sure that my digestion system stays regular as well, too. All right. So hugely important. You can check us out at iheartfruitbox.com to check out all those tropical fruits. All right. So that's number five, at least 25 percent of your diet fruit. My diet is probably probably 60 percent fruit, to be honest with you. OK. All right. Number six incorporating superfoods, all right? Superfoods are going to be things like, let's say, for instance, sea moss, all right? So, so you've got sea moss, which is one of my favorite. I put sea moss in my teas. I put it in my smoothies. I use it in recipes as a binder, okay, instead of using egg. Uh, so sea moss is great. That's a superfood. Herbs, okay? Herbs are superfoods too. And I'm talking about these herbs that you're putting in your foods already, Okay, but you're putting the dried form in them. Start incorporating some of the fresh form. Okay, that could be rosemary, thyme, oregano, sage. The list goes on. Dill, the list goes on and on. But incorporating herbs into your foods, I put them most of the time in my salads and I always put one in my actual smoothie as well too. Okay, so that's how I incorporate that type of superfood. All right, medicinal mushrooms. You know, you've seen me with lion's mane. Uh, oyster mushrooms, but I'm also incorporating other medicinal mushrooms as well, too. And again, tropical fruit, soursop is very medicinal for the body. All right. Number seven. Number seven tip. Don't drink a lot of liquid when you're eating. OK, this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making, drinking a lot of liquid 
when they're eating. You should drink before you eat, okay? So like when you order your food and you get a glass of water or whatever it may be, drink a full glass of water, okay? At least five to 10 minutes before you start eating. All right, hydrate yourself, lubricate the, the digestive tract, okay, before you start eating. And then when you start eating, because it only takes liquid about 10 minutes to go through the stomach, all right? If, you, if, if you're hydrating while you're eating, it's diluting the, the acid in your stomach, okay? The more you dilute the acid in your stomach, the more difficult it is going to be to break down the food in your stomach. Because that acid that was a pH of maybe two, you start adding in water, which is probably a pH of seven or better. Now that pH starts to creep up. And as it creeps up more and more, now it's not able to break down the food because it's not acidic enough. Okay, so don't drink a lot of liquid while you're eating. Drink before, okay? And then while you're eating, you could take sips to clear your throat of the food. All right, so that's a really great tip. The last tip, Remix all of your favorite meals, okay? I know how daunting it could be to start a new diet and lifestyle, okay? Most of you have very immature taste buds, okay? Do you know how kids, kids will get to a point where they won't eat anything but chicken nuggets or anything but macaroni and cheese, okay? And they will not only cry when you try to get them something else, they will starve themselves. They will go on a food strike. Most, most adults have that type of taste bud when it comes to food. So when it comes to eating food that is actually healthier for them, their taste buds are so corrupted that they literally respond like a child when they're eating healthy foods, okay? Now, here's the great point. Here's a really great thing to think about. The, help, the more you eat, of healthy foods, the more your taste buds are try start to change. That's one of the biggest things that people notice when they do my detox, okay? After my detox, they notice that they like foods, perhaps that they didn't even like before. I didn't even used to like onions and mushrooms, okay? After I cleaned up my lifestyle, started eating healthy and started detoxing, all of a sudden, most of the foods that I cook have onions and mushrooms in them now. Okay, so your taste buds today may not be your taste buds tomorrow once you get sort of engrossed and embrace a healthier lifestyle over a period. But right now, your taste buds are immature. And because they're in immature, what I'm going to encourage is remix your favorite meals. I still eat spaghetti. I still eat spaghetti. I make my own sauce. Okay, I use, typically will use something like chickpea noodles. Okay. And then for most of you love things like, I remember my mom used to make the spaghetti with the meatballs. I make mushroom meatballs. Okay. So I remix one of my favorite meals so that I can still eat my, eat my favorites. Okay. That keeps you happy. And as long as you're happy and you're getting what you want and you're able to get some joy and the nutrition is delicious. That's one of the key things that I find that really helps people. If they can make it nutritious, but also delicious, then it's very easy for them to transition to a healthier lifestyle. So remixing some of your favorite meals is going to be able to help you out a lot. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do me a huge favor. Share this video with somebody who needs to eat healthy. I know everybody knows at least 10 people. So make sure you share the video. Smash that subscribe button because I need you to be subscribed to the channel. That helps me out. Hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next video. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.